Section 7.2, Day 1, Indefinite Integrals. In the past, we've calculated definite integrals. And remember, they gave us numerical answers because they represented the area under the curve. Well, indefinite integrals, like you see above, won't quite give us an exact numerical answer. What they'll give us is a family of functions that have the same derivative. Notice how there are no limits of integration in that integral. It's indefinite. There's some uncertainty behind that. We don't know exactly where we're going to be finding this area, but if we evaluate this indefinite integral, we'll get a family of functions that we could then use uh, over any interval to find that area. And again, that family of functions would have the same derivative, since after all, we're finding an antiderivative here. So here are a couple examples. There's that x squared minus sine x dx from the last slide. To find the indefinite integral to evaluate it, we'll still need an antiderivative. We just don't have any bounds of integration to, to plug in and, and evaluate with. So let's find an antiderivative for x squared. An antiderivative for x squared would be x cubed over 3. Remember, that's the power rule for integration. Uh, an antiderivative for minus sine x would be plus cosine x. And then recall, like when we solved differential equations, we need to add some constant at the end. Let's check our answer now by differentiating that. Let's do the opposite. We better get x squared minus sine x for our answer. If we take the derivative of x cubed uh, divided by 3, we would bring the 3 down. We'd get 3x squared over 3. A derivative for cosine x would be minus sine x. The derivative of the constant c would just be 0. Well, plus 0, that disappears. We have a divide by 3 and times by 3. We get x squared minus sine x like we started with. So that tells me we found the correct antiderivative here to evaluate that indefinite integral. Let's look at one more example. Uh, the d indefinite integral x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus cosine x dx. An antiderivative for x uh, to the fourth would be x to the fifth over 5. An antiderivative for 3x squared would be x cubed. An antiderivative for cosine x is sine x. And then remember that plus c at the end to represent that constant that we might have, that constant that disappears when we take the derivative. So those are indefinite integrals, no limits of integration. What we have is a family of functions that all have the same derivative. Now sometimes we're going to run into functions that do not have a familiar antiderivative. On the last two examples we use the power rule and then our knowledge of trig derivatives to find antiderivatives. Well if you look at the indefinite integral on the screen, cosine x times e to the power of sine x, an antiderivative probably doesn't pop into your head right away. So what we can do to make that easier is make a substitution to more easily find an antiderivative. So let's look at that uh, same indefinite integral from the last slide. Let's try making a substitution of letting u equal sine x. So when we go to take this integral then, we would have cosine x times not e to the power of sine x, but e to the power of u because we're making that substitution. And then we still have our dx. Now the problem is we've uh, introduced this new variable u and our variable of integration is dx and we can't integrate when we have that kind of situation. So what we need to do is solve for du so that we can somehow get this in our integral. Well if we differentiate u with respect to x we would get du dx on the left hand side. On the right hand side the derivative of sine x equals cosine x. Okay. Now, in order for us to make this substitution here, notice how we don't have any du dx's over here at all, but we do have a dx. So let's try to not have dx be in the bottom of a fraction like that. Let's multiply it over to the other side so that we end up with du equals cosine x dx. Now I want you to notice something. We've got a cosine x dx right here, that du equals, and we have a cosine x dx inside of our indefinite integral. So we can now make the substitution so that we have for our indefinite integral the integral of e to the power of u and for cosine x dx we can plug in du. Now we have the same variable of integration as we do inside of the integrand there. We can find an antiderivative for e to the power of u. An antiderivative for e to the power of u is still e to the power of u but then remember plus c. Now we don't want to call that our final answer though, even though we found an antiderivative. We want to go ahead and resubstitute for u. So let's take sine x and plug that back in for u since that's what we started with.
Okay. So here is our answer for that indefinite integral found using u substitution. Let's check our answer. Let's see if we've done this correctly. If we take the derivative of our final answer, we better get what we started with, cosine x times e to the power of sine x. Well, if we take the derivative, the derivative of e to the power of sine x would be e to the power of sine x. But then by the chain rule, we'd have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent, and the derivative of plus c would be 0. So we do end up with that integrand, which tells me we've done this correctly. That's u substitution for evaluating indefinite integrals. Let's look at another example. Now we have the indefinite integral of cosine 4x dx, and we're going to let u equal 4x. Now remember that on the last example, I had to solve for du. I'm just going to do that right away. du would equal 4 dx. So let's now uh, get our substitution here. Remember, for 4x, we're going to plug in u. Now, uh, we don't just have dx. Unfortunately, we have 4 dx. We don't have a 4 inside of this parenthesis to multiply by. So what we can do is take a step back here and see if we can get creative so we can make that substitution. We know that we can substitute in for 4x u. Okay, we can make that substitution. But in order to substitute in du, we need 4 dx, and all we have is a dx. Well, if we want to have a 4 inside the integ integral right there, we could multiply by 1 fourth on the outside to balance that out. If we multiply by 4 on the inside and 1 fourth on the outside, it's like we multiplied by 1. We haven't technically changed anything. Now we can make that substitution for du. We can plug du in for 4 dx. So let's make our substitution now. We have 1 fourth times the integral of cosine, not of 4x, but of u after we make that substitution. And for 4 dx, we substitute du. We need an antiderivative now. We would get 1 fourth times an antiderivative for cosine u would be sine u. And then plus c, remember, plus that constant. The last step is to resubstitute. For u, let's put back in 4x. If you take the derivative of our final answer in that green box, you should get the integrand that we started with. And you will. Let's try one more example, the definite indefinite integral of 15 times 3y minus 6 quantity squared dy. We're told to use a u substitution, u equals 3y minus 6. I'm going to solve for du right away. If we solve for du, we would get 3dy. All right. So somehow we need to end up with a 3dy inside of our inter integral there. Okay. Well, in order to do that, there's a 15 in there already. Why don't we just factor out a 5? Then we would have our 3y minus 6 quantity squared. We took 15 and factored out 5. That leaves us with a factor of 3 left inside the parentheses. And we have our dy. Now we can make that substitution. For 3 dy, we can substitute du. So we have 5 times the integral. For 3y minus 6, we can substitute u. So u squared. And for 3 dy, remember, we're substituting du. An antiderivative for u squared would be u to the power of 3 over 3 plus c. For our final answer, let's resubstitute. 5. I'm going to write this as 5 thirds times 3y minus 6 goes back in for u cubed plus c. There's our solution right there using u substitution. We factored out a 5 so we could have a 3dy which allowed us to substitute in du. Now there's one more example here. I'm just going to write down the final answer and I'm going to let you see if you can do this use substitution correctly. Here is my final answer. 1 ninth times 5 plus 2t cubed to the power of 3 halves plus c. That's the end of the notes for section 7.2 day 1. Thank you for watching.